Hi, I'm Josh McLean with David Walters Yachts, and today we're in Newport, Rhode Island. We're actually underway right now in Newport Harbor, on our way to go pick up a, uh, a mooring ball for the evening. But I'm standing here on the aft deck of this beautiful 2010 Hylus 70 named Rover. Rover is a two-owner yacht, commissioned in 2010, transferred ownership around 2019, and the family that owns her now has enjoyed leisurely cruises around the New England area. So we've got the crew on deck today. We're just heading over to our mooring ball, and uh, I'm gonna take you on a little tour up top sides, and then we're gonna head down below and I'll show you the highlights of the interior. Up here at the bow of the boat, we've got a couple of really unique features here that make this boat really easy to handle. A lot of confidence behind the helm and the way that you can manage this yacht. So one of the primary features up here on deck uh, are these uh, hydraulic furling units. Now these are uh, um, Selden hydraulic furling. So it's all push button. So at the helm station, we can unfurl and furl, trim the sails uh, right from the helm. Uh, that makes it really nice and easy to handle this yacht uh, with minimal crew. Um, now up here on the bow, we've got some pretty substantial ground tackle. Um, so we've got uh, twin bow rollers, uh, primary and secondary. It's all here on this uh, uh, Lumar hydraulic uh, windlass. We're up here on the fore deck of Rover, and I'm going to point out a couple of the features here that uh, to me are, are, are good highlights of this yacht. So first off, you'll notice a lack of teak decks. Now we do have teak in the cockpit, uh, but up on deck, uh, it's all molded non-skid, and it's this nice linen beige uh, contrasting non-skid, so it does add some nice aesthetics to the yacht without having the hassle of being uh, maintenance intensive. As well as the tow rail, we do have a uh, aluminum perforated tow rail here along the, the hull sides. That's a very functional feature of the yacht, being able to put snatch blocks on there for running rigging if needed, but we do have just a touch of high gloss varnish teak here, um, as well as the handrails. All the hatches are high quality manship hatches with smoked acrylic lenses, all in very good condition. Uh, port lights are manship as well. Now back here at the rig, you know, we've got a painted uh, Selden rig, GMT carbon fiber spinnaker pole, and a really high-end Park Avenue boom. So if you're a performance-oriented sailor or care about squeaking out a couple uh, extra tenths of a knot of, you know, of boat speed, the sail shape you're going to get with the Park Avenue boom is definitely going to be superior to any furling system. It's also rather easy to use. It's a very simplistic system. So you have lazy jacks that can be deployed to really get the sail area tucked into that Park Avenue boom when it's time to put the main away. So that combined with the hydraulic furling of the head sails really does make this boat very easy to manage by a cruising couple. So as we head back down along the side decks, uh, we know we've got uh, Navtech rod rigging here. Now this Navtech rod rigging has actually been replaced just a couple of years back in 2016. And while this yacht was in the paint shed, uh, having her whisper gray hull paint done, she also had the rig down and all of the rigging and components of the mast and boom inspected. So it can be assured that this boat is in fantastic sail away condition. So as we look down the side decks here, you'll notice it's very clean and uncluttered. Uh, you know, it's a wide side decks here, so it's easy to maneuver fore and aft on the yacht. Um, now the uh, sort of the transition here into the cockpit, the primary entrance is going to be from the aft, this nice walkthrough, but there is this teak step here up into the cockpit as well when you're moving about. Uh, all of our winches are high quality Antel, uh, and we have, uh, these are all hydraulic uh, push button winches. One of the best features that I find on Hylus yachts is this extended um, uh, push pit here. So the push pit actually is a solid stainless steel, 316, all the uh, welds are nicely polished here. But that push pit extends all the way up here to the midship gates, where we have a solid rail here and then a removable boarding gate here. Uh, there is a swim ladder that can be installed on both the port and starboard sides. So that makes it really nice when you're uh, coming broadside along the tender or uh, just getting in and out of the boat. So the extended uh, push pit is really a feature that I like to see on many Hylases. 12 inch cleats all throughout the yacht. So we've got two pair at the transom. Then we've got our midship cleats here. 
uh, and then we've got two pair up at the bows. Coming back here to the aft deck of Rover, uh, a couple things I want to point out. Uh, first off is this uh, passerelle cradle here. Now this is actually a carbon fiber passerelle. Uh, if you're ever going to be uh, over in Europe or in uh, any marinas where we're going to be uh, using a Medmore, uh, the passerelle is definitely a, a nice feature and that integrates right here with the transom of the boat. Um, we have uh, stern seats here with uh, nice cushions and that's actually a varnished teak under the, uh, under the stainless here. Uh, we've got a uh, arch system here with two uh, um, deck masts, port and starboard here. We've got our track vision KVH system here uh, and then up here we've got our KVH uh, track phone. Um, also on the arch is a uh, dinghy motor davit. Uh, which we can use to uh, launch and retrieve the dinghy motor to alleviate some of the stress and strain off the davits while we're underway. Speaking of davits, these are really nice stainless steel Simpson 225 davits. So between the pair, there is a load capacity of 225 kilograms. So you can get a pretty good size tender on a Hylus 70. With that 18 foot of beam, there's a lot of room to be able to put a, a, a nice large uh, center console tender off the transom. Here at the transom, uh, we've got uh, teak steps that come right down here to water level. Um, so the teak is in really good condition. That's one of the things I want to emphasize is uh, the teak on this boat in the cockpit and at the stern here is in really nice shape. It's got a black caulking, really thick, a uh, lot of longevity and life here left to these, uh, the teak here. Uh, at the transom, we've got, uh, we can see our, um, our chain plates here for our split back stay. We also have uh, push button controls here for our Glendenning cable spool, which is really nice. We've got two 50 amp shore power cords that come out right here. Uh, and with that Glendenning system, it makes it really nice to be able to launch and retrieve those cables and without having to lug them around. Uh, swim ladder here folds up flush with the transom. And then there is a uh, freshwater hot and cold shower right here as well. Coming back up the uh, transom, uh, there is a Winslow six-man offshore life raft. This has been recertified up through March 2024. Of course, the barbecue grill, that's a staple of any cruising boat. So as we come from the aft deck into the cockpit environment, um, I want to point out a couple of highlights of the uh, center cockpit. First off, it's a beautiful walkthrough design. So you've got this great access from the aft deck with a smooth transition right to the cockpit lounge. Now we have sort of two sections to the cockpit environment itself. We've got the business end and the leisure end. So here we've got twin helm stations uh, with Lumar uh, Mamba steering linking the, uh, the twin helms to the rudder. Uh, we've got redundant controls, port and starboard with our Raymarine electronics. Uh, these are Raymarine E120 hybrid touch units. Uh, we also have autopilot units at both uh, port and starboard helm, as well as joystick control for the bow thruster. Uh, on the port helm, we've got our electronic throttle controls, uh, our uh, EMR engine control and our start panel. Uh, we've got a Raymarine ST60 Plus uh, wind meter, both port and starboard, uh, and of course we've got our VHF radio. Now as we come forward into the uh, sort of the lounge end of the cockpit, we got plenty of seating here for a large crew. So the, the cockpit seating um, is uh, all centered around this beautiful six foot high gloss varnished cockpit table with a beverage cooler inside. Uh, there's also stainless steel cup holders and uh, stainless steel fiddling all the way around. And these cockpit leaves, uh, they do come up for this table to expand its size. So really nice uh, uh, outdoor seating area. Uh, up here around the companionway, we've got Raymarine multifunction displays currently displaying our wind, our depth, and our speed. Another Raymarine E120 chart plotter, which is a great feature because if the boat's on autopilot, you're predominantly tucked right here as the boat's cruising and sailing along, and you're able to monitor the boat's positional data right here. Um, to port, we do have our cockpit winch, this uh, Antel W66 hydraulic winch, so we've got push button controls here, uh, and a uh, uh, we've got an Antel clutch here um, for, uh, these are prim primarily used for our, uh, our halyards. So as I come out of the cockpit here, a couple of things I want to point out. First off is these uh, cockpit cushions here. So we can see we've got bolsters around both the port and starboard helm, as well as a full matching uh, cockpit cushion set. Uh, the Bimini and Dodger itself is all very high quality Sumbrella material. 
Um, it's got uh, these zippers that are inserted here to be able to accommodate the full enclosure. Now this whole enclosure here um, keeps you well protected in, uh, in, 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 in foul weather. You can basically seal yourselves into this whole cockpit environment and stay bone dry. Uh, I've been out in these boats in a pretty good blow with the canvas all up and uh, I'll tell you it's a very pleasant ride. So the whole boat is really well outfitted uh, for the, the family style of cruising. Uh, it really is a world voyaging yacht. You could take her anywhere with complete confidence uh, with minimal crew. And I think that's a very important thing to stress is you don't need a full crew complement to manage a 70 foot yacht such as Rover. The interior configuration of Rover is a four cabin, four head setup. So starting at the forward section of the yacht, you have the Ford VIP master stateroom. En suite to that stateroom is the VIP head, and then just aft of the VIP cabin is the guest cabin to port. Now that's a double berth, and adjacent to that cabin and across the forward passageway is another guest head. Now the two forward heads share a common shower, which is a really nice setup because it gives both cabins access to their own private head, but you're using the space wisely with just a common shower. So then after the forward section here, we have the main saloon. We've got a nice passageway galley, which we're going to take a look at later. But the aft accommodations, we've got a very spacious full beam master stateroom with his and her heads. And that starboard head is actually shared with the aft crew cabin, which is great for crew or grandkids or a couple extra guests to have them. It is a bunk style cabin that's just off of this aft passageway. Now the port head in the aft cabin is really the master's head. So you've got a big, uh, big head, all with vacuum flush, uh, freshwater heads. And then you've got a nice size shower back there for the master suite. So the interior accommodation on this boat is really nice for large families uh, or a owner operator um, with uh, the occasional captain or crew. Uh, it's really spectacular and a versatile setup. The main saloon of Rover is really one of the most commodious areas in this yacht. This is where your family's gonna spend a lot of time. You can see the, uh, the main saloon's all sort of focused around here, this, uh, this L-shaped settee here to port. Now, this is a, a, a pearl-colored ultra leather. Uh, now, the fabric is in really good condition. It was replaced just a couple of years ago. Uh, very easy to clean and care for, uh, and just a very, it's a very attractive and, and neutral color. So it's uh, aesthetically pleasing to uh, a lot of different uh, tastes. So um, one of the other key details here is this uh, uh, dining table here. So the, the, the joinery work on this table is just superb. I've seen a lot of the woodwork coming out of the Queen Long Yard where Hylas is built. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful tables I've seen. It's a burl wood. Uh, we can see this both the, on the port and the starboard table. Just really, really spectacular high gloss finish. Uh, there's seating for 10 around this table here. So you can really get a lot of guests uh, aboard and, uh, and fed. <laughs> Happy crew. Uh, for additional seating, we've got these nice pull out stools. Uh, these can fold up and tuck away very easily. Uh, and one of the kind of neat parts about these is you can use them as a stool or if you pop the cushion off, it becomes a nice little uh, cocktail table that you can take around the yacht. Um, and you can see the, the nice wood finish there. Now the uh, joinery on the yacht uh, is, uh, is teak. Now we have a, uh, this is a vertical grain on Rover with a hand rub satin varnish finish. So it's real nice, doesn't show the fingerprints like a lot of the high gloss finishes does, uh, has held up really nicely um, and uh, has really carried the age of the vessel well. Um, on the uh, starboard side of the yacht, we have another seating area. Now this is a seven foot long settee. Uh, it's also set up really nicely for being used as a sea berth. So we've got pad eyes uh, on the uh, ceiling as well as lead cloth that can install underneath these cushions. Uh, there's another table here that opens up um, that can be used for additional dining space or if you're going to be entertaining guests, there's uh, collapsible legs down below that this can actually drop down to about cocktail height and uh, it makes a great uh, sort of entertainment table. Uh, the cabinetry on the yacht is really spectacular. There's a ton of storage space here. So 
here we actually have, this is uh, sort of the wine glass liquor cabinet here. Uh, it's all felt lined. It's really, really, really neat. So that can all be set up here for your uh, uh, custom bottles or whatever beverages you prefer while underway. Um, really nicely finished out. Um, there's uh, blinds here over the uh, race saloon windows. All the teak trim here is in nice condition, so there's no excessive wear on the varnish work here. These blinds uh, easily go up and into place. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it because it feels like it's going to break, um, but we'll just keep pressing on. <laughs> um, on the forward bulkhead, there is a Sony flat screen TV uh, that's all set up uh, in the uh, and incorporated with the, uh, the Bose entertainment system, which is up here on the ceiling. Reading lights all throughout the yacht, as well as 12 volt DC fans. So one of the best parts about owning a 70 foot yacht is the size of the galley. So this is really a uh, spectacular galley setup on Rover. Uh, there's a lot of creature comforts here uh, incorporated into the design of the yacht. So uh, just starting at the forward end, we'll work our way aft. Uh, the cabinetry and storage space here is really, really spectacular. So there's a lot of uh, uh, fiddled shelves here. These are actually removable and adjustable. There's drawers for your uh, cutlery uh, and knives as well. And these are all quite deep. So there's a lot of, uh, lot of depth here to the cabinets. So you can really fit a lot of, uh, a lot of provisions and, uh, and stuff in here. Uh, these are uh, stainless steel Vertifrigo pull-out refrigerators and freezers. There's a lot of depth to them. Uh, they're really well insulated um, and uh, definitely uh, a lot of cold storage here on the yacht. As we come a little bit here further uh, aft in the galley, there is a trash compactor here as well as a 12-volt uh, uh, DC uh, dishwasher. Um, there's a lot of um, storage space here for your dishes and glasses and everything of the sorts. So this is the convection oven here. It's really fantastic for cooking meals underway. Uh, you know, some days you just want to be able to put together a quick meal. And it's nice to be able to use the convection oven as opposed to relying upon the stove. Just keeps the temperature of the yacht down and it sure is quick and easy. Uh, the stove is a Force 10 three burner unit with uh, oven and broiler. And then on the top side here, there is a Corian insert that can be used to expand your countertop space. These are all Corian. Um, so you don't get food and grime stuck in edges anywhere. It's really nice and easy to clean up. This can be polished, so any scratches you may have uh, uh, from uh, preparing in the galley can easily be buffed out. But um, really clean, very neutral colors, uh, and a very practical space. So as we move aft from the main saloon here, we're in the aft passageway to starboard. Uh, and this aft passageway here, it's uh, well overlit with opening port lights here. Um, and there's actually another port light opening into the cockpit on the galley side. But it gives you a lot of good ventilation here. So um, one of the first things we see here in this passageway is actually our side access. Um, and I would actually call this sort of our primary access to our machinery room, which uh, I showed you the front access, the engine here earlier. But, uh, you know, through these doors here, we have full and uh, unobstructed access to all of our major systems on the yacht. So we've got our uh, 12 kW Panda Fisher, we've got our 260 horsepower EMR engine, all of our ray cores, access to the whole exhaust system, um, many of our uh, pumps and plumbing, refrigeration units, everything is right here. So when you're talking about servicing the yacht, uh, this is about as good as it gets. Now, um, adjacent to the machinery access over here to starboard uh, in uh, opposite the uh, you know in, inside of this uh, pocket door here we have our crew cabin now this is an over under bunk style cabin uh, which is really good for the grandkids or uh, a couple extra crew members or if you're going to be uh, traveling with a captain and stew it's a great spot for them there's also ensuite access here to one of the aft heads and then if we come a little bit further aft we'll take a look at the uh, master cabin 
So we're, uh, we're here in the master stateroom of Rover. This master stateroom it really has a positive impact on a lot of folks that are looking to move up, say from the mid 50s range, which would be a very common stepping stone for folks coming into a yacht like the Hyla 70. Here in this cabin, we can really appreciate that 18 feet of beam. We've got a tremendous amount of space um, and it's all focused around uh, this uh, center line queen berth. And it's, uh, it's actually a little bit larger than a queen, a little, little smaller than a king, but a very comfortable berth um, with nice mattress here for, uh, for the owners. Um, just looking at some of the features of this master cabin first right here. Uh, for those that are maybe still working or working remote, you've got this nice uh, little office set up. There is a vanity style mirror here um, as well. Um, obviously it's all air conditions. It's very comfortable. Uh, a lot of storage space in this aft cabin. There is hanging lockers to port and starboard, as well as a, a bank of drawers to port. Um, nightstands, port and starboard as well. Tall hanging lockers here. And then on the forward section of the cabin, uh, we have an entertainment center with uh, another bank of drawers. Um, one of the unique uh, features here about this aft cabin setup is really the his and hers or Jack and Jill style heads. So the primary or the largest of the two ensuite heads is to port. And there we have a large, large owner's head with a big shower that's almost seven feet tall. Um, the shower floor is actually sunk down into the cabin so a little bit, give you a little bit more greater depth. Um, all four of the heads have uh, vacuum flush electric fresh water um, toilets. Uh, three of the four have been replaced. The one that's actually in the uh, aft port uh, is, is original, but it's still fully, fully serviceable. Uh, all the heads are trimmed with uh, Corian countertops with uh, fiddled edges, mirrored vanities, um, mirrors on the bulkhead door or the uh, passageway doors. Very comfortable, uh, very accommodating uh, for you and your guests. So this is the master head, and this is really the this is the owner's head. You know, you do have two heads here in the master cabin, but this would be the primary head. It's got the big shower in it, and I've got plenty of headroom here. Um, it's actually uh, sort of inset into the cabin sole. You'll see that in a minute here with the detail shot. Um, each of the four uh, heads in this yacht do have the uh, electric vacuum flush freshwater heads. Uh, three of the heads have been updated. This is uh, this is the one here that is uh, that is original, still fully functional, in good servicing condition. Um, you've got a whole bank of uh, mirrors here, adjacent with um, medicine cabinet storage, opening port lights here, fans for ventilation, uh, and a mirrored uh, mirrored uh, passageway door. Um, teak uh, varnished teak uh, grates here in the shower with. Uh, um, molded fiberglass subflooring, so uh, it's a very easy to clean, easy to maintain head. Uh, the Corian countertop looks fantastic with the fiddled edges. Uh, it just, it's, a, it's a really comfortable uh, and luxurious setup. The Ford VIP cabin here in Rover is really a spectacular space. It, it provides really wonderful accommodations for your longer term guests or family. It is arguably the size of a master stateroom on many comparable yachts. Uh, so we have a centerline queen berth here, uh, flanked on port and starboard here by these great overhead lockers. Uh, all push button latches so everything stays in place when you're offshore. Now there are uh, hanging lockers both the port and starboard as well as a dressing seat. Um, there's storage underneath this berth, but what's really nice is uh, from a accessibility standpoint is the access to your systems. So uh, underneath this forward berth on these nice gas, gas hinged springs, uh, we have our Aqua Whisper uh, water maker here and these membranes here were actually just replaced um, so everything's in good serviceable condition we got access to our air conditioning units here um, Clark pump and is uh, is forward of this um, actually under the forward cap uh, action of the berth is uh, our battery bank for our windlass and our bow thruster so good mechanical access and very very comfortable accommodations for your guests so we're gonna step back a little bit here um, and as we're moving aft, uh, here's our ensuite access here to our forward uh, VIP head. We'll show you in a moment. Uh, but over here to port, we have a really comfortable double cabin. So this is good for the kids or uh, extra crew members here. This is a large double, so you can actually get two adults in here. Um, I'm about six foot here, so this would be a real comfortable for someone my size. There's cabinetry outboard, as well as a hanging locker forward. 
bank of drawers. And then there's a nightstand here adjacent to the berth um, that's got fiddled edges, a uh, little cabinet space, and some pull-out drawers as well. Three opening port lights here and manship hatch up on deck. So you get a lot of really good ventilation here, uh, even if you're not going to be running the air conditioning. There's also good storage down below here for uh, spare tools and whatnot. Um, and beneath my feet, you wouldn't believe it, but there's a ton of storage space right under here. And then against the, uh, the aft bulkhead here in this cabin, we have, obviously there's a, uh, a dressing mirror, and then there's a nightstand with a couple of drawers here down below. Uh, adjacent to all the berths are uh, outlets here for things like uh, iPads or uh, phone chargers. Um, there's also these, uh, uh, these, these uh, two-speed fans throughout, reading lights, and then uh, a good set of uh, port lights here, uh, or portholes here that open up, and then uh, overhead hatches here. And these are all nice, high-quality uh, stainless steel manship hatches, and you can see we've got uh, screen inserts. Uh, overhead all of the deck hatches. So the forward heads here, um, you know, as I mentioned before, we've got ensuite access here for the VIP, and then you have a adjacent access here for the port side guest cabin. What's unique about this setup is between the two heads, you actually have a really good uh, full-size shower. Uh, and that's a good utilization of space, but it still gives everybody their own, uh, uh, own private uh, facilities. So we're going to take a look at some of the um, uh, mechanical and uh, ship systems here. Um, and a lot of the ship systems are actually located right here under the, uh, the cabin sole. Um, this is a raised saloon design, uh, which essentially means that most of our systems are actually kept here under the cabin sole, and the saloon uh, sole is actually elevated up, so we get these nice uh, views through the main saloon windows. Uh, one of the advantages of that design is the fact we've got excellent access to a lot of our, our systems. So I'm just going to pop open a couple of these uh, positive locking cabin sole boards. We're going to take a peek and see what's down below. So we're going to start uh, right here uh, forward of the companionway. And uh, you can see down below here, um, we actually have access to our battery bank, which is below this, uh, this fiberglass shelf down here. Um, you can see we've got a little bit of storage in here for some spare fluids, but underneath that is actually access to uh, a lot of our battery systems. Pop uh, this one up here aft of that. Here we've actually got a really good view of our, uh, uh, our, our, our main sump here. And this is actually, we can see the, uh, uh, the keel stub here. Uh, you can see the substantial stainless steel keel bolts right down there in the bottom of the bilge, as well as the hoses here for our primary and our secondary bilge pumps. Now, uh, what we're looking at right here, this is actually our Harkin power pack here for our hydraulic system. So we've got uh, all hydraulic winches, bow thruster, um, you know, and, and various other systems throughout the yacht here. So this power pack here is actually sort of the, the heart of the hydraulics. Anchor, also hydraulic? Yeah, yep. All right, and then uh, a little bit further aft of that compartment here, we have, uh, again, again, there's more access down here to, uh, to, to batteries, but on top of this shelf here, we can see we've got a, some good storage here for our um, offshore uh, safety kit, uh, flare kit and such. So well, there's a lot of storage space down here in the bilge of these boats. Uh, now, this yacht here is equipped with uh, uh, stainless steel uh, fuel and water tanks each of which are accessible here uh, and very easy to, uh, to, to kind of get into and service. So this right here is actually one of our diesel tanks. Uh, this is our third uh, diesel tank here. It's all um, really nice, high quality stainless steel, great fittings uh, throughout. Uh, you got about 710 gallons of fuel and then you've got uh, 390 gallons of fresh water. And all of our tanks are accessible through uh, these various hatches uh, on the cabin sole. So we can see just on the other side, here's our uh, number two tank. Uh, each one of these gives us access here. So in terms of uh, accessibility, you can reach just pretty much every single pump, tank, battery, switch, Raycor, filter, um, 
it's it's all readily accessible. All right, so we're here in the uh, what I would affectionately call the fifth cabin of this yacht, uh, which is really the mechanical space. And as you can see, I mean, I'm uh, I'm sat down here in the engine compartment. Back behind me is a 260 horsepower Yanmar engine that has always been professionally cared for and kept all the circuit service records are available, clean oil samples straight back from the lab. Uh, this engine really does uh, purr like a kitten. Uh, and then back behind the Enmar, and we'll show you the details in a moment, is a 12 kW Panda Fisher generator. Now the control panel for that is actually at the nav desk, uh, and with that system you can operate uh, pretty much everything uh, while underway in terms of the AC systems, uh, air conditioning and such. So the, the mechanical space on this yacht is really, really spectacular. I mean, you can sit down here for your oil changes or for your general service and just access every component. Uh, right adjacent to me here is the dual ray cores here for the primary engine, and the ray core for the generator is actually just back here. So from this space here, uh, I can tr pretty much troubleshoot and access every system on this yacht. If you have an interest in taking a look at this special yacht, um, my name is Josh McLean with David Walters Yachts. I'd be happy to take you aboard. You can contact me by emailing josh at davidwaltersyachts.com or calling me anytime at 616-204-9658.